how to how to make your money work. But the big statement, you don't want to put everything in one fund. Seem to make sense? So let's talk about how a mutual fund works. So let's just pick, I'm going to use like a, a can. Okay? And this can, let's call this American Funds. large cap. These are the big companies. This is your Amazon, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, um, Walgreens, um, and there's others in there. Okay? So, what we're basically doing is in this can are shares. In this can we have shares. And a share, if you want to think about it, is you are buying a portion of each and every one of those companies when you buy a share. Okay? Now, how many shares are in a mutual fund? Catch a sneeze first. <coughs> Excuse me. There could be anywhere from 100 shares to 10,000 shares, 100,000 shares. You don't know. But just because you, let's say a share cost. Today, let's say it costs $25 to buy a share. Okay? So this is where your money makes money. Okay? So if I bought something at $25 and time goes by and now it's worth $50, and then so your net worth in that mutual fund went from $25 at one share to $50 when you bought that share. So you've just made money. So theoretically, you could sell that share that you owned, you bought for $25, you could sell it for $50. Okay, so that's one way of thinking about making money. But the way I'm gonna look at it is this. This uh, mutual fund is going to act somewhat like a bank. Okay, corporations, are part of mutual funds for a reason because their borrowing power against a mutual fund is a lesser amount and a smaller tax amount than if they were to buy borrow from a corporate bank. So this is not a real bank, this is just acting like a bank. So what's going to happen is you want to take your money and let's say we're going to buy hundred dollars every month worth of shares so up here means you could have bought four shares when it gets down here it means you but you only can buy two shares following my madness now because your money is working in this mutual fund they're gonna pay you back interest so you're putting money in and then it could pay you out interest which could be income or you could divert your interest back into buying more. So now you are investing and your investments in this mutual fund are investing in mutual funds. So right now, if you are in that case scenario where you're buying $100 each month and each month your interest comes either to you or goes back into it, now you have two pieces of buying power. So this is just kind of a game to play, and I don't have a magic number. I don't have the exact answer. But just for all intents and purposes, we want to get our worth in this particular mutual fund to be $10,000. Simple enough. Again, you're investing. It's making interest. So then you're going in and buying shares. And the shares are increasing in value because the companies might be doing better better now the share price fluctuates it goes up and down it's nothing to sit there be alarmed at if you look at a mutual fund day to day you're like oh my gosh it went from 43 dollars a share to 37 dollars a share i just lost money you still own all the shares that you had purchased it's just they're not worth as much don't worry the following day the following week the following month hopefully it continues to go back up so once you get to that $10,000 mark, 
you have invested ten thousand dollars you are going to find yourself another mutual fund okay and this other mutual fund doesn't have to be the same kind. It doesn't have to be large cap. It could be a mid cap. It could be small cap. Mid cap are smaller companies that make about two and a half million a year. Small cap are companies that make under a million a year. Okay, same idea. They just work the exact same way. So now, you are going to stop buying on this one, and you're going to start putting money on this one. Okay. Now, this mutual fund is going to turn its dividends or its interest back in to buy more under your name, okay? Now, here is a really fun game to play with it. Let's do this. Remember, this mutual fund we still own, right? We have $10,000 sitting in there. So I can take, keep taking the interest of having to pour back into this mutual fund, or I could take now the interest that I'm making on it and pour it into this one. So again, we have certain shares that we're buying. Shares go up and down in value. Don't panic about any of that. It's just how the nature of the game works. But take a look at that other mutual fund. That other mutual fund, you're investing your $100 into. The interest that you're getting each month on your mutual fund is being reinvested into it. The share price is going up and down, totally fine. But this mutual fund that you bought at $10,000, you're going to hold it at $10,000. Anytime it goes above $10,000, we're going, and any interest that this makes is going to go over here. So this $10,000 might take you two to three years to do, to get to, to get to that $10,000. This mutual fund, we also want to get to $10,000. But because I'm using my first mutual fund's interest to fund that, as well as my money that I'm investing, as well as the interest from that mutual fund, this is gonna grow faster. So this is gonna to get to, this is gonna take uh, two to 2.5 years to get to 10,000, okay? You had, you had more entities that were investing into it. Well, let's say once this gets to $10,000, you are going to find yourself another mutual fund. And again, it becomes your choice. You want to do something called diversify your money, meaning you are spreading your money out onto a lot of different playing surfaces. So what's going to happen is now I'm no longer going to buy here. I'm going to start buying here a share for $100. This interest will invest back into itself, okay? This interest is now going to come here. The interest that this guy makes is also going to come here. So we want this mutual fund to also get to $10,000. And this is going to take you one to two years to get up to that value. So now you've diversified your money. Now, how many mutual funds is enough to have? In the investing, I personally do. Okay, this is not including my wife. We, so my, my wife has given me permission to kind of be my own person in this endeavor. I personally have three mutual funds. Okay, I have, a lar I have American large cap, I have international, and I have uh, mid-cap American funds. So an international fund is world companies, world corporations, okay? Other countries are involved in it. My mid-cap are smaller companies, companies such as, uh, oh, what's a smaller fast food chain that we might be involved with? Chipotle was a mid-cap for a while, and that's jumped up to a large cap because it makes too much. Um, let's say, Forever 21 store. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, that might be a mid-cap company. 
Okay, it might be a large cap, I'm not sure. I've not haven't checked its thing. But I've basically done this. So this is what I have done with my mutual funds. So that now I have my three mutual funds. So once everything gets to 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, then I say, okay, I want this one to go to 20,000. Okay, so if that one gets to 20,000, how it's gonna get there, I'm gonna invest my money, I'm gonna have its interest pour back into itself, and my other two mutual funds that are 10,000 are gonna pour their interest into that. So once this gets to 20,000, then I wanna move this one to 20,000. Okay, once that gets to 20,000, I wanna get this one to 20,000. And then I'm gonna continue the cycle. Okay, now, I will say, for this to go from 10,000 to 20,000, this is le less than a year. Okay, this one is also gonna be less than a year. This is also less than a year. Okay, so in all reality, in this little model we've gotten up there, you know, one to two years, one to two years. So if we went two years, two years, two years for each of the original 10,000s, that's six years. And then we get up to less than a year, so make it nine years. So basically, just rounding up, nine years to get up to um, get up to sixty thousand dollars. We're basically I invested a hundred dollars, twelve months, so I'm uh, seventy-two hundred dollars into the game to be at sixty thousand dollars, and then keep going with the game. Once this gets to twenty thousand, and all the rest are at twenty thousand, get up to thirty thousand. Keep playing the game. Make this thirty thousand now. Make this thirty thousand now. Once that takes place, do the 40,000, do the 50,000. As you play that game, that all works really well. And the neat thing about these mutual funds, and I didn't really talk about this with the investments, but the mutual funds, let's say I have these three mutual funds. I have these three mutual funds. I'm gonna to get to a certain age where I might not be invested in the mutual funds any longer. Let's say I get each of these mutual funds just to $100,000 each. So now you're talking about 300,000, okay? I'm just using arbitrary values that are easy enough to see. What I'm gonna do is these are all at 100,000. Now I'm ready I want to I want to keep all my shares. So let's say let's say here I have 4000 shares of this company. Let's say here I have 3000 and let's say here I have 2000. Okay? And they're different amounts of shares because the price of each one fluctuates up and down. $100 sometimes might buy one share, might buy three shares, might buy five shares. It just depends what it's doing and I'm just doing $100. Okay? So what I can do at this point is the interest I get here interest I get here and the interest I get here is my money so every month each of those is going to make interest okay I still own the same amount of shares in the in those mutual funds but now I'm going to take the interest as a supplement to my income okay or a supplement to my other things that I've done. Now, when you get to, if these are under, if these are retirement accounts, there's a few things that take place, a few things that you have to make a decision. I don't know what the right decision is. So you could have turned this into a Roth IRA, individual retirement account, and the Roth IRA has some really pretty sweet things. You pay the interest, or you pay the tax on the money that you invested into it. Now, whatever money those make in the future, you don't pay tax on. So if this was a Roth, 
and I get these, these interest for those Roth, no taxes are collected when it comes out. And that sounds great. That sounds great. The hard thing with the Roth is if you're investing $100 each time, basically only $70 is going towards it because you're paying the $30 in taxes, roughly 30%. Okay, so it's like, well, then I don't have quite as much buying power if I had a Roth. But if I don't do it as a Roth, I just do it as a traditional, this means my taxable income while I'm making money is brought down because I'm invested in my future with the knowledge of I will pay tax on the money I invested in the future. It's a game to play. Now, it's very possible that you could create some of this to be a Roth IRA and some to be a traditional. You can play around with it. Okay, and there's ways that you can, especially if you're going in the same fund as a Roth and a traditional, you collect the money back, federal government says, hey, you need to pay taxes. You're like, no, the money I took out was what I put in as a Roth. And that kind of makes the IRS kind of like scratch their head going, well, shoot, they got us on that one. Okay? So I don't know what the right way to do it is. Um, I've diversified where I have some Roth, some traditional. It seems to work. I have these three funds that my wife has allowed me to be a part of. My wife has six other funds that she deals with. Um, but this is what we have done. But think about this. When I turn 75, when I turn 75 years old, I am then expected to sell off 10% of my shares every year until I croak. Okay? And that, it doesn't mean you can't reinvest that money. You sell off 10%. Go and reinvest it if you wanted to. Okay? But the federal government has rules in place because they're trying to, they, they want your money the best they can. You know, we'll be, we'll be a nice guy to you. You don't have to worry about it here. We'll get you later. When you get 75 years old, all of a sudden it's like, okay, you got to sell 10% of, of all of those shares. If I had, that means I would sell 10% of those. So 400 we sold here, 300 sold here, 200 sold there. The following year, I'd have to do the same thing over and over. But this is just a way to go through it, and it becomes a, a game to play. And my biggest advice for all of you is, one, you're always allowed to ask me for advice. You can always contact me saying, hey, you told me about this, but you need to find a really good brokerage firm that you can stay investing with, okay? So that's basically another